Hey, I'm Roy from Speakingly. In this video, you're going to learn 10 highly effective English animal idioms that will absolutely catapult your spoken English. Stick to the end of the video and learn a unique animal idiom. You are such a busy bee. Busy bee. Being very busy at home, at work, or just running around all the time. Jumping from one thing to another. It describes someone that is extremely busy very hard working and productive. So if you want to tell someone that they seem very busy, you can tell them they are a busy bee. I would use that in a conversation. In a work setting, you could say, she's such a busy bee, takes care of all the administration and all the finances. She's amazing. In a private setting, you could say, you're a busy bee, getting all the supplies and preparing all the food for the birthday party. So if you want to describe someone who is always on the go and working hard, busy bee. Damn it! Cat's out of the bag now. Cat's out of the bag. When information you're not supposed to know, like a secret, is revealed. It could be an accident, could be deliberate, could be positive, like a surprise, or negative, like knowing that someone's about to be fired. A long time ago, piglets used to be sold in bags. Sometimes the seller would put a cat in the bag instead of a piglet. When people found out all the cat came out of the bag, they found out the secret. The seller tricked them. In conversation, you could say, It was so frustrating. He let the cat out of the bag about my surprise birthday party. My brother accidentally let the cat out of the bag about the trip to Japan. And now my wife is so angry at him for telling me about it. She was hoping to keep it a secret till the last moment. And yeah, well, I really want to go to Japan. The company tried to keep the product a secret. But when the photo leaked online, cat was out of the bag. It happens a lot. Look what happened to Apple. Man, I, I don't like it here. I, I don't know anyone. I mean, look at this place. I'm, I'm, I'm like fish out of water. A fish out of water. If you ever feel like you don't really belong in a situation, a place, or even your job, and you don't really know what to do with yourself. The origin of the idiom, well, is quite literal. When you take a fish out of water, they don't do very well. This is where the phrase comes from. It's used to describe someone in an unfamiliar or very uncomfortable place. I think it's tougher for the fish, though, right? Hear the shock. I'm not used to speaking in public. Surprised, right? I mean, YouTube and all. But when I had to actually give a speech at a conference, a large one with a lot of people, I felt like a fish out of water. I really did not want to be there. I mean, it was fine in the end. I thought of that old trick where you imagine the audience naked. You don't want to know. They look terrible. If you're a city person and you don't really like going camping, you might be like a fish out of water in the wilderness with lots of creepy things that try to eat you. I absolutely love camping. She felt like a fish out of water at the new school. Just didn't feel comfortable in, in the new surrounding. And she didn't know anyone. The elephant in the room. Yeah, that elephant. Kind of big, right? The elephant in the room refers to a very large, kind of obvious problem that everyone completely ignores. Or you just hope will go away? Which never happens. How do you deal with this issue? My youngest daughter seems to think that you just open the door and ask the elephant to leave. Nah, that doesn't work. It's often used in social situations where there's some tension and discomfort. But it can also be used in the context of business or politics. Let me show you. We really need to address the elephant in the room. The company sales have been declining. You're addressing a problem, but you want to be polite about it. If that kind of company isn't doing very well, maybe it's time to move on. Another one. My sister and I had a massive argument last night, but this morning it was like an elephant in the room. We were both pretending it didn't happen sometimes hard to address a big issue when it's right in front of us. What? Hold your horses. I'll be with you in a sec. Hold your horses. It means to be patient, 
calm down, wait a bit before taking any kind of action. The phrase comes from the use of horses and carriages. The rider or driver would hold the ropes or reins that were used to slow down the horses or direct them. This idiom tells someone to slow down and think about what they're about to do. Or maybe they're a bit rushing. In a conversation you can say, hold your horses, we need to make a plan before we start rushing into things. Hold your horses, I'm not ready yet, I still need to get dressed. So the next time someone tells you to hold your horses, it means that they want you to be patient and take your time. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and a like will be highly appreciated. More crazy animal idioms coming, so hold your horses, crypto is monkey business. No wait, NFTs, NFTs are monkey business. Well, are, are both of them monkey business? Monkey business. A situation where someone is behaving silly or not taking things too seriously. It can also refer to being dishonest or having some illegal activities. The roots of the term come from a dishonorable act. Like parents in England that used to warn their children against bad conduct, termed monkey tricks. We also refer to actual monkeys playing around in the jungle or in zoos. My daughter is always up to monkey business. Last week, she convinced me to, um, paint my fingers bright pink. Luckily for me, it came off. Hey, 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 come closer. You didn't hear it from me, but I heard there's some monkey business going on in the accounting department. There has to be an investigation. You didn't hear it from me. Are you up all night again? Are you a night owl? A night owl is a person who stays up late or till the early hours of the morning. Well, the origins of this idiom are quite literal. Owls are nocturnal creatures, meaning they sleep during the day and are mostly active during the night. So a night owl is someone who stays up late, just like owls do. It's often used in a positive way, as it implies that someone is productive or very creative, especially during the late hours. I love working at around two o'clock in the morning. It's quiet and I just love that time of day where you could just think. How would you use it in a conversation? I'm a bit of a night owl. I do my best work after everyone has gone to bed. My wife is such a night owl. She always stays up late watching movies and occasionally reading a book. Hey, stop horsing around. Learn some idioms to horse around. Goof off, waste time often used in situations where someone is not taking things seriously. The origins of this phrase is, again, literal. Horses are known for their playful behavior, especially when they're young and can run around and jump and do all sorts of things. So to horse around means behaving in a playful or a bit silly way. You can say things like, stop horsing around and get back to work. We have a deadline to meet. Come on, stop horsing around and get serious. We need to finish this. I know someone that is always horsing around. He walks around in a bee suit and um, um, he says he's a busy bee. Is there a similar phrase in your language? I'd love to know in the comments. Come on, don't chicken out. It's just skydiving to chicken out, to be a bit scared or back down from something you fear or don't really want to do. I know what you're thinking. What do chickens have to do with it? Well, chickens are very fearful in nature. They will run away or hide at just the slightest chance of danger. So to chicken out means to back down or give up when facing a challenge or a difficult situation. Think of situations where someone had the opportunity to do something that's a bit brave or risky, but backed out at the last minute and it was so disappointing. There are many different examples to use the phrase, like, I was going to ask my boss for a raise, but I chickened out at the last minute. My friend was going to try the craziest roller coaster, but he chickened out just as he was supposed to go in. Have you gone up to see the bird's eye view? It's amazing up there. Bird's eye view. It has two meanings. A high distant or perspective looking at the world from above, or seeing the big picture 
and getting a better understanding of a specific situation. In the past, people would try to imagine what it would be like to see things from a bird's eye view. Now with technology, like drones and satellites, we can actually see the world from that kind of perspective, even beyond. Let's see the first meaning. From the top of the skyscraper, we had a bird's eye view of the entire city. We could see all the sites that we want to visit. The drone footage gave us a bird's eye view of the glaciers and their movement. Iceland looks incredible from above. Let's use a second meaning. I got the new project and I really need a bird's eye view of all the details. I have to see what I'm dealing with. Um, wow, it's raining so hard. What? Crazy, it's raining so hard. As promised, this one's a bit different. Wow, what a storm. It's raining cats and dogs out there. Raining cats and dogs. To describe a very heavy, if exaggerated, intensity of a rainstorm. The rain is so hard, it seems everything is completely soaked with water. I went out for a walk, but then it started raining cats and dogs. I had to run all the way home. It was raining cats and dogs all morning. The football match was cancelled. So the next time you hear someone saying it's raining cats and dogs, you'll know to take an umbrella. If you want more phrases like these, jump to the video coming up. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next video.